If you're still experiencing pain with your new knee replacement, there could be a few things that you are not doing. And on this channel, I'm going to show you what that is. Whether you have had a partial knee replacement, a full knee replacement, or revision surgery, this video is for you. Also, before we jump in, just a quick disclaimer. If you feel that there is something seriously wrong with your knee, swollen, something feels loose, you maybe had a fall, and now the knee just doesn't quite feel the same, I urge you to go back to your doctor and let him have a check out and give you the all clear. That way, these exercises will not only help you, but they'll actually be good for your knee and overall strength for your body. So, with that said, let's get into it. So to fix your squats and pretty much anything else you have to do with your knees, climbing stairs, kneeling, and so forth, we first have to bring in some signs. You see, the knee is actually a very complex joint. There are two articulating surfaces on the knee. The first one is the tibiofemoral articulation. That is where your shin bone and thigh bone come together. And then there is the patellofemoral articulation, and that is your kneecap sliding up and down on your thigh bone every time you bend your knee. As you can see, there is a little bit of medial and lateral rotation happening at the tibiofemoral area. That means that when we squat down, our tibias are rotating slightly medially, and as we push back up, tibias rotate slightly externally. Now we need that good rotation for what we call the screw home mechanism. And then there is the kneecap, the patella femoral articulation, which also slides in and out of its own groove, which also has a little bit of medial and lateral rotation of its own, which can also be a source of pain. So what does all this mumbo jumbo actually means? Well, all it means is your knee not only flex and extends in a straight line like a hinge joint, but actually rotates medially and laterally as well. Now, depending on the type of knee replacement you had, for instance, a uni or a partial knee replacement with the sparing of the posterior cruciate ligament, you will have no noticeable differences. But with a total knee replacement, you will lose some of that rotation. But according to this article, in fact, it's not a bad thing. But according to this article, a significant loss of rotation would mean that you will not be able to straighten your knee to that zero degree mark and could cause you end up looking like a flamingo. Now for your squats or any activity that needs to take place pain and stress-free, you need three things. Pivot, glide and rotation. As you can see, the healthy knees range of motion compared to the other options, there is still some form of medial rotation, which is very important. If you cannot straighten your knee, it means that you've got no rotation left in that knee and that is what we're going to help you with today. The second thing, you need good flexion and extension in your knee. That is the range of motion that you have right now, bending your knee as far as you can after the operation. That is also dependent on what your knee flexion was before the operation. And for everybody that is different, and then that depends on what type of knee replacement you've had and what type of range of motion you had actually going into the surgery. Best case scenario, zero to 110, 120 degrees, which is also called the functional arc because most of your daily activities or functional activities fall within this range, which is fully under active muscular control. And third, you need good ankle and hip mobility because without these two, it is like pushing a shopping trolley with that squiggly wheel that just keeps on veering off the left. Now that we understand the actual signs behind the knee, let's get into the exercises. So let's start with your good knee on a cushion or a pad or if your yoga mat is thick enough that will do well and your replaced knee or the painful knee up into a 90 degree angle with the ground so if you can look at it from a different angle you can see that my knee on the left side and my foot on the right side there is a good distance between the two so that we're not in in line which is going to compromise our balance so keeping a nice stable foot on the ground both hands on the thigh we're going to move forward and back. Let's see how far over that toe we can go and back. Forward and back. And the next one is going to be a little bit harder. We're going to be pushing the knee out to the side first, engaging the glute muscles, the glute meads on the side, and we're going to be pushing out and forward all while keeping the big toe or the ball of the big toe flat on the ground. And you'll notice that my knee, my heel, sorry, my heel is not lifting off the mat. And the foot is also not doing this 
off the mat. So we're pushing out and forward and back. Out, forward, getting a nice glute engagement and back. One more time, out, and forward and back. Now for the second part of your drill, we are going to do a modified split squat. Now what I mean by that is, we are going to start your knee already slightly in a, say, abducted position, just slightly on the outside of this last toe, the fifth toe, the small toe. Okay, so we're gonna start the knee slightly on the outside of the small toe. From there, I'm going to anchor my back foot into the floor and I'm going to lean forward, try to push my glute out. As you can see, my knee is drifting forward and back. And we're gonna practice that. So first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be moving the knee backwards, pushing the bum out, keeping the chest up, and we're gonna press up off the floor. You can use your hands if you want or need. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push ourselves up and we're gonna bring ourselves back down again without moving the knee in or out. So the knee moves out slightly and we push through the floor, we lift up and we come down and repeat. We're gonna do this five times. Up, don't go all the way straight and come back down. We wanna avoid locking our knees out at the top of the movement, especially during a squat or a lunge, always keeping our knees soft so that we take advantage of that medial and lateral rotation of the knee. So again, two more, up and down, keeping that knee slightly out and up and down, making sure that that foot remains flat on the floor. So now that we've finished with the other drills, we are going to move into the whole reason why you're watching this video, is to see whether we can squat pain-free or to the very least, minimal, minimal pain, and we might increase your range of motion in your knees. So there's a few ways we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna start off with just a basic bodyweight squat. I don't like you to load your squat at this stage or maybe at any stage, depending on what age you are, what your goals are, because you do not want to do squats so frequently that you're going to wear out your prosthesis within the next five years. So we're gonna start off with bodyweight squats because that is the most functional squat that you will be using on a daily basis. So we're gonna get into our squat position. Feet are slightly outside shoulder width. Toes are either completely straight or moved slightly out, which is something that you can play around with. Looking straight ahead, moving the hips back, just as we practiced on the one knee and up and down. And again, all the way down, nice and comfortable, and feel what those knees feel like. Okay. And while you're squatting, you will notice your knees will start drifting out towards your small toe as we are doing these squats. And make sure you're not shifting your body weight from left to right or from right to left. You're staying in the center and five. If you're still feeling some pain, there are a few things that you can do to adjust your squats. Remember, it's going to take a few days or weeks for these changes to stick, so be patient. Try squatting down to a higher surface like a chair and initiate your hips before your knees. Also try out different foot positions and see what works. It's all about the patella tracking, so adjusting your feet will help reduce the sheer forces going through the kneecap. Lacking any of these movements sets you up for more pain and dysfunction. These could be some of the major reasons why we have so much pain, degeneration and replacements in the first place. Which reminds me, if you schedule to have a knee replacement or had one recently, check out my Total Knee Arthroplasty Home Protocol. The pre app section will help prepare your knee before surgery so that you have the necessary strength and mobility following your surgery. Trust me, your surgeon will thank you for it. 